since the beginning of architecture, it was kind of a no-brainer that you had to draw well in order to be an architect. Until recent years, that was not debated much. You should not only be able to represent on paper what you imagined in your head, but more importantly, you have to sell your idea. You have to convince the client of your skills and creativity. If we look at the old drawings, they're magnificent, the true art. Architects spend many hours working on a single drawing or a detail. And the point was not to create an artistic image as much as it was to present to people how the built project will look like and also give them visual instructions maybe on how to build it. Fast forward to the second half of the 20th century and people started replacing technical pens with a mouse. And throughout the years we became witnesses of the fast evolution of digital visualization, so-called renderings. These are some of my renderings from 15 years ago or more. And they were really useful because unlike drawings, you didn't have to start with a blank paper for every view. You would model your object and or a landscape and then uh, take as many snapshots as you wish from every angle at a different time of the day in different settings. And the goal was to get the model to be as realistic as it can. The first photorealistic renderings I remember were like true magic, not a photograph, an artificial 3D model made so realistic that you cannot tell if it is real or not. I remember being fascinated by it uh, when I learned how to use 3D Studio Max 2, I think, when I was in high school. Of course, achieving photorealism was really difficult in those days, and instead people often presented very artistic types of renderings. This is one of mine. Usually not because they wanted to create them in an artistic way, but because that was the best they could concoct using their software skills hardware capacities and maybe sense for composition. However, somewhere along the way, photorealism became a standard and I guess it became boring because people started branching out from this highway and started producing highly artistic depictions of their future projects. And these depictions didn't have much to do with reality. Artistically beautiful, this developed into an art in self. Many of them I could easily print out, frame them and put them on the wall in my living room, like I would with the old drawings. They're amazing works of art, but is that their purpose? Is the purpose of an architectural rendering to be in a gallery or to show us how the object will look like so that we do not get surprised when it's built? Is it not dishonest in a way to create a rendering that, although artistically beautiful, has nothing to do with the actual building that will sit in front of your entrance tomorrow? Whatever your stand on it is, my opinion is that in the same way hand drawings were replaced by renderings, they will now be replaced by virtual reality. It's very simple, we are just adding another dimension to the game, interactivity. And adding a new dimension always changes the game completely. How does that relate to unrealistic artistic renderings? Just be patient for another minute and I will get to it. With the drawing, you had to draw every new view. With the rendering, you modeled once and couldn't generate as many renderings and videos of the building that you wanted. So you added this third dimension so you can move freely around the space and take snapshots. But there were just images and videos from this point of view. You can watch, but you cannot touch. You can sit in your chair and observe the screen, but you're lacking another dimension, interaction, immersion. Well, now you can actually walk through the model. These are some random shots from our startup that offers VR experiences in architecture. And the main point is that VR is far superior to rendering. With the rendering, people are often used to adjusting the camera angles and do enough post-processing to distort the way the object will look like. Especially in the interior design renderings, to make spaces look larger and so on. In VR, you can actually feel the space and if the camera angle is distorted, you can easily notice it. You can turn around, walk around, you can even draw in space. And what is most important, you can interact with the space. You can change colors, materials, you can move furniture around, you can move walls, or just sit and enjoy the sounds of nature on your future terrace. Hey, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. But let's put it back on, because that is the whole point I'm trying to make. And now we're getting back to the subject of artistic renderings. I think that VR in architecture will bring us back and closer to reality. At least at the beginning, it will remind us of the true purpose of architectural visualization. And I think this is very good. Why? Well, because first, the purpose of a rendering is to truly represent what your object is going to look like. And with VR, you can see and feel the space. It is actually pretty amazing if you haven't tried it. Second, I have mentioned in almost all of my videos, architecture is dangerously tilting too much toward art, for my taste at least. 
And don't get me wrong, architecture should remain and always will be a form of art, but a balance has to be achieved because architecture always had that task of achieving harmony between form and function, stability and price, taste and reason. And keeping it real in the visualization department is a good and important development for keeping that balance between art and engineering. Additionally, I talked before about how we as architects have to move forward and offer something no other profession can. I feel that we do not follow the progress of science and technology enough and other professions are chipping away the expertise from us. Architectural visualization is in our yard and if it is getting much more complicated, great. We should not run away from it and let programmers and game designers deal with it. No, we should see it as an opportunity and embrace it as another part of our profession and become experts in it. And guess what? Again, programming plays a big role there, so it all adds up nicely, right? Remember the triangle? We started with programming the structure and we will expand our skills with visualization and finally with artificial intelligence. After that the robots can take over and we can enjoy reality. Any reality that is offered. When it comes to VR there are different types of developments. There are, for example, plugins like Enscape that you can use for your BIM projects to fly around using your VR goggles. But if you ask me, game engines are superior to this. Yes, they are more complicated, but they represent such a powerful set of tools that you are only really bound by your imagination. Whether you choose to use Unity or Unreal or some other game engine, once you develop enough programming skills, you can add all sorts of different interactions and eventually be able to completely design inside the virtual reality. You can add different scenarios, see how your building looks when it's empty or full of people with a storm outside, or on a nice summer day, and if you want to get more serious, then let us integrate all our automation in the, field of, in the field of sustainability and structural optimization. Let us simulate in virtual reality what happens if I change the properties of walls, if I let the window open for half an hour, does the temperature change, humidity, if I remove a column, will the structure fall on my head? The most exciting thing is that we are just at the beginning of these types of developments and it is all ahead of us, and it is up to you to come up with ideas and algorithms. One can argue that programming for game engines is a bit more complex than programming for CAD software and yes, my experience shows that that is true, but it's even more fun, so we will talk about it extensively in the future. In my future videos and lessons I will help as much as I can with sharing my knowledge. I'm working at the moment on online lessons for programming for Rhino, but I plan to organize a set of lessons on using and uh, programming game engines for architectural visualization as well. But as always, time is very limited and it will depend on lots of other factors. However, we will start with which software to use, Unity, Unreal, and then go on to cover some technical aspects. What programming language you can use within those programs, what you have to learn as an architect to be able to enter into the game engine world, etc. etc. We can also ponder about what comes after virtual reality. We will just think about the dimensions that are missing. We have the 3D space, we have the interaction, but we do not have the touch yet, the smell, the feedback, so there are more steps to go and I'm eager to find out what awaits for us around the corner. Now, what do you think about the development of VR visualization? How fast will VR replace classical renderings? Do you think that going the direction of photorealism is good or not? Maybe you think all renderings should be artistically represented. What is the value of an artistic rendering? And what would you like to know about the application of VR in architectural visualization? Feel free to comment, share and support us. Stay free, let's get to work.